We have time for four questions, inshallah ta'ala. Maghrib is close. I believe it's in a couple minutes, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. So if anybody has questions. Huh? Sisters can write down on our paper, inshallah. All right. Was that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it proves that you guys are paying attention, huh? <laughs> you know, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala, anhuma, you know what he said? He's, when he was asked, how did you seek knowledge? How did you gain this much knowledge? Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala, anhuma, was a large man. He would take the seat of two or three people, right? And, 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 and when he would take his seat in Mecca, in, in the later part of his life, and in the last five years, he moved to Ta'if, when he would sit in his majlis, in his session, people were surprised at how much knowledge Ibn Abbas had. Like, to the fact that they were like, is this guy a magician? Who is Ibn Abbas? He has so much knowledge. So he was asked, how did you gather all this knowledge? He said, بِلِسَانِ سَعُولِ وَقَلْبٍ عَقُولِ With a tongue that actively asks, وَقَلْبٍ عَقُولِ And a heart that is alive, like somebody who had intellect, right? Uh, so uh, asking questions is, 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 is very important. But inshallah, I guess uh, nobody has questions. Uh, we'll leave it at that, inshallah. All right? Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's a good question. And uh, one of the ways in which you can do that is by having, being in a good environment, having a good group of friends around you. That's really important because friends have an influence on you, uh, you know, no matter who you are. All right. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in an authentic hadith that the people of goats, Ahlul Ghanam, right? He talked about the people of goats and the people of camels, right? Ahlul Wabar. Al Ghilzatu al Jafaf fil Faddadin Ahlul Wabar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that, you know, Al uh, Ghilza, which is basically, you know, Shidda, uh, being hard and extreme, from the people of camels, right? Wa al Sakinatu al Waqar fi Ahlul Ghanam. Tranquility and calmness, being cool, calm, and collected, all right? Or people of goats, people who herd, you know, uh, goats, basically shepherds. All right, this this is animals affecting human beings. So imagine people affecting, you know, friends affecting you. So when you're entering high school, make sure you have a good group of friends. All right, make sure you choose your friends wisely. And they used to say in the old days, عن المرء لا تسأل وسل قرينه فكل قرين بالمقارن يقتدي. As the Shaykh once said, he said, don't if you want to know about a person that you don't need to do anything, right? All you have to do is ask about his friends. You know what we say today? If you want to know about a person, you don't even ask his, you don't even ask his friends. Go on their social media account and you know about them, right? So al Mahim, uh, having a good group of friends, that's really essential. And that could be the difference maker between you being on the right track and being on the far track, you know? Creating a good environment, especially in high school, especially when you're a freshman, you're entering that hostile environment, you know. I don't know how it is in high school these days, but uh, a lot of tensions, a lot of drama, a lot of things going on, right? And you don't want to get caught up uh, with the wrong friends, with the wrong crowd, all right? Be stingy with who you choose as friends, all right? Just like you got to be stingy with your time, you got to be stingy with your friends. You can't just befriend everybody, especially in this day of age, all right? We have a... We have a question here, since the Hanafi Madhab goes back to Abdullah Mas'ud, how about the Shafi'i Madhab? The Shafi'i Madhab is an uh, interesting Madhab because the Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, uh, although he started out as a Maliki, he started studying under, under Imam Malik up until he passed away in the year 179, he also went to Baghdad and he studied under the student of Abu Hanifa. 
His name was Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani. Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani passed away in the year 189. Al Shafi'i says about Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani, Akhatu anhu wiqra ba'irin. What a donkey can carry, or what a camel can carry, of books. Yani a, a camel, what, yani how many books can it carry? That's why I took from Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani. So Al Shafi'i, what he did is he took the Hanafi madhab and he took the Maliki madhab and combined it. And that is why Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, his student, considered a Shafi'i the Mujaddid, or the reviver of the second century. All right, because of this combination of both madhabs. All right, the Maliki madhab goes back to the, uh, the madhab of Ibn Umar and Abu Huraira and Aisha, these companions. All right, and then uh, the Al Fuqaha al Saba, something known as Al Fuqaha al Saba, the seven jurists that were from the Tabi'een. All right, in fact, they say the Maliki madhab. Majority of Malik statements go back to these seven scholars of Medina. The, the, the fatawa that Imam Malik gave were actually numbered, very numbered. Majority of his fatawa goes back to these seven, these seven uh, scholars of Medina from the Tabi'een. And these seven scholars from the Tabi'een, they go back, majority of them are students of mostly Ibn Umar and also Aisha and Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhi al jamia. So that is the uh, Hanafi madhab. Uh, uh, can the speaker repeat the questions of the brothers? We cannot hear questions. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, the brother, he asked, uh, uh, what would you advise uh, uh, for those you know, going into high school, uh, starting their freshman year, what would you advise them? And you guys heard the answer. And the question here says, what advice do you have for young sisters who always feel peer pressured to fit in age group 15 to 18 years old? A lot of peer pressure is a problem. It's a huge problem. And, 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 and the only way that that can be rid of is, like I said earlier, creating another group, another environment like that. And that only can be created by leaders. People, some people in themselves, they're just influential. They are leaders, all right? And if you are that person, then be that person, all right? Take the lead. That's what we need. Uh, most people will just follow the flow and follow the hype. So uh, that's what I would say. I mean, Maghrib came in right now. Inshallah, we'll leave it at that. We have, uh, we have, we have one minute? Okay. All right. You yeah. mentioned like uh, seeking knowledge is the first step for yeah. people to take. Mm -hmm. So how does somebody go about seeking knowledge correctly? What's that first step for them if they really want to do that? All right. The question was, uh, how do you, uh, you mentioned uh, seeking knowledge, okay? And that's the first thing that we should do. What are the correct steps of seeking knowledge? That's the question, right? طيب, uh, seeking knowledge is a, is a whole baha, it's an ocean in of itself, right? And the scholars have written volumes about just how to seek knowledge. But to concise, to keep it brief, the first thing is that uh, you should find a teacher, somebody who mentors you along the way, okay? Somebody who mentors you along the way, that's what you need to do. All right, uh, you can't just like, you know, be all over the place, find a book, read an article, watch a video, we can't do that. That's all good and dandy, but you need to find a teacher to actually properly seek knowledge. That's the first thing uh, that you need to do. And then obviously, you know, we don't want to go too deep, but that's, I think that's like, that's, uh, that's vital. Finding a teacher, a sheikh, a uh, stad that that's teaches you. Huh? That's easy to do. Huh? That's easy to do. That's easy to do. That's, that's a good question, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, sometimes you can't find a teacher. Right, uh, but inshallah, there are the, in our city, you know, we have mashallah, Shaykhuna Shaykh Ilyas, Hafizahullah, he has a dars here every Friday night. I encourage all of you guys to come and take advantage of it. every Friday at 7 p.m. to see. Uh, and there's also another dars at Masjid uh, Isra, I believe, right? Every Sunday night, or that's finished. Okay, so Friday night, you know, that's, that's a good opportunity, you know, take benefit from Shaykh. He studied about eight or nine years in Medina, he put in work. He served, as they say, right? He served, so uh, take advantage of, you know, you have teachers, you also have other mashaykh that are available. Uh, anybody have any other questions? All right, we'll leave it at that, inshallah. All right, inshallah. I have one question, just leave Okay, beautiful. All right, beautiful. Yeah. First of all, Jazakallah Khair for coming, you know, for your time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. For that, so my question is: <clears throat> one of the challenges is uh, a gap between young people right, um, and their parents. Right? 
So one of the things that you spoke about, for example, about the issue of identity, I think that sometimes the, you, know, you have the parents pushing an identity, the masjid is pushing an identity, and you know, what you were suggesting, another identity. So <clears throat> the issue with parents, how do you deal with parents who um, they have like suitcases packed? They probably haven't even been back home for like years. But here, and in here, they're, they're back home. But they're not, and they're not really here. How would you suggest dealing with the parents that are like that a lot of times who they just want you to memorize part nine and just be good, but they're not dealing with the challenges that, or seeing the challenges that young people are dealing with? From, uh, from these guys' perspective, or from our perspective? Yeah, from perspective. All right. How do they, how All right. they Deal with their parents. Okay. Yeah. And that kind of like gap between them and their parents. All right. Question, it's deep. <laughs> yeah. Because right. they're your parents. Yeah. You're, you're young. We're supposed mm -hmm. to obey our parents. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to listen to them and so on. But yeah. sometimes, like I said, it's, in their mind, they got these backpacks like, man, as soon as, as, soon as everything's cool in Somalia, we're about to go back. <laughs> as soon as everything's okay back in Ethiopia, inshallah, we're going back. Yeah. Uh, so the way they think and operate. It's not like they're really here in America. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so the question was basically, uh, how do, yeah, I need the cultural gap that we find between parents and, and, and young people over here, parents from back home. Uh, how do we as young people, how do we deal with that? Uh, you know, first, we like to establish that we have to respect our parents, all right? Even if they get to the point that they leave the religion, we still have to respect them and obey them. Also, ahibuhuma fi dunya. Aruf, as Allah says in the Quran, right? No matter their religion or so, we have to keep their respect, and 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 and, and you know, have to obey them. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, parents are human beings. Uh, maybe talking to them, a lot of parents they just don't know. They just don't know. You know what I mean? They don't know the challenges that people go through, and they're just caught up over there. You know, uh, trying to go back home and whatnot. Uh, they just don't know. What we got to do is we got to create a dialogue. We got to talk to our parents. I mean, from where we come from, there is that culture that kids don't talk to their parents, right? They don't, they don't, that's not how it goes down. Like, you don't chill, you don't have serious one-on-one -on -one conversations like they do over here. Uh, you know, in fact, back home countries, if they used to say if the parent was seen with kids, you know, uh, and people would disrespect the parent himself. So parents, they really don't, you know, they're not really, any, especially fathers, you know, if I'm talking about fathers, right? So we need to, we need to discuss, we need to talk to them, we need to tell them. We need to, hey, I grew up here, I'm like this, I don't understand. We need to talk to them. A lot of times we don't tell them anything. And if we do tell them, we tell them in a very, uh, uh, you know, in a wrong way. We've got to tell them in a calm way and, you know, when everybody's calmed down. We talk to them in, uh, at a time in which they are either busy or doing something else or they're angry, whatever it may be. So at a time in which they are calm, time there they can listen, you know what I'm saying? Time they're not too busy, right? And, and over the years, inshallah, maybe Allah will open up their hearts and open up their, you know what I'm saying, and they'll understand, okay? Uh, that's from our perspective. That's what we can do, okay? Because a lot of times parents may be hard to convince, okay? But what needs to be done from a community level is that, you know, parents need to have some why. They need to, you know, we need to, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know how that can be done, but maybe like set up workshops for them or whatever it may be uh, so, so that they can understand what we go through as young people over here in the society and they have to understand that your kids they're not from back home they're from here okay you gotta they gotta understand that all right and 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 and, and so uh that w that's what we could do from a community level uh, from our perspective as young people the only thing we could do is only really sit down all right so um that's how i would answer a question maybe there are other brothers out here that are more qualified to to to, to, to answer this question. And I like to say, Man fi ghayri fannihi ata bil -gharaib, as they say, whoever talks about something that's not his specialty, then he brings strange matters. So I hope I didn't bring strange matters to you guys. So, Wallahu yeah. Mustaad. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
جزاك الله خير بارك الله فيكم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين